In this lecture, let's have a quick overview of Angular files and the folder structure of Angular project. And let's understand the use of each of them one by one. Whenever we create a new Angular project using Angular CLI, it generates a bunch of files and folders inside the project directory. And each file and folder has its own purpose. So let's see the use of some of the important files and folders of Angular project, which you should know about. And let's start with this node modules folder. This folder is where all the third party libraries get stored on which our application might depend on. And this folder is purely for development purpose. We don't deploy this folder in production server. Okay. So this node modules folder contains all the third party libraries on which our project is dependent on. And let's say in future, if we install some other third party libraries or package, those third party libraries or packages will also get stored inside this node modules folder. Now, while deploying our Angular application in production, we exclude this node modules folder from the deployable package. This folder is not required in production. It is only required for development purpose. Okay. Below this node modules folder, we have this source folder. This folder is where we need to put all our application source code. So all the code related to our Angular application will go inside this source folder. And it is this folder with which you will be working most. Inside this source folder, we have this app folder. And this app folder currently has one component and one module. So it has this app component and this app module. And remember that every Angular application must have at least one component and one module. Now, whenever you want to create a new component or a service or module, you will create it inside this app folder. Below this app folder, we have this assets folder. This is the folder where we store the static assets of our application, like images, icons, text files, etc. Then we have this environments folder. This folder is basically used to set up different environments. In this folder, we have two files, one for production environment and another for development environment. So inside these files, we can write some environment related configuration. So we can use these files to store environment specific configurations such as database credentials or server IP addresses. Then we have this fav icon. It is the icon file that displays on the browser. Below that, we have this index.html file. This index.html file is the main HTML file which gets rendered in the browser when Angular app runs. If you notice, here we don't have any references to any style sheet or JavaScript files. This is because all these dependencies will be injected to this file during the build process by Angular CLI. Then we have this main.ts file. This main.ts is a TypeScript file and this file is basically the starting point of Angular application. So in a lot of programming languages, we have this concept of main method, which is the starting point of a program. And we have the same concept in Angular as well. So whenever this Angular, Angular application will run, the first file which will be executed is this main.ts file. Because this file is the entry point of any Angular application. In this file, all we are doing is we are bootstrapping this main module to this project. And here the main module is this app module. So we are bootstrapping this app module to our project. So when we will run this Angular application, Angular will load this module and everything else will start from there. Then we have this polyfills file, which basically imports some script that are required for running Angular. This is required because Angular framework uses features of JavaScript that are not available in the current version of JavaScript supported by most browsers available out there. So this polyfills fill the gap between the features of JavaScript that Angular needs and the features supported by the current browser. Then we have this style.css file. This is where we add global CSS style for our Angular application. Also, each component can have its own style as you will see later in this course. Then we have this test.ts file. This file is used for setting our testing environment. Again, for now, we don't have to worry about testings. Then the another important file is this editor config file. 
This file is basically used to set up the team environment. So in real projects, many developers may work on single project and each developer may follow different coding standards to declare variables, classes, etc. But in the end, we need to merge the code of each developer to produce the final product. At that time, it may produce some error or messy code as each developer is having different coding standards. In order to solve this problem, the edit config file is used where the standard rules are defined which needs to be followed by the developer in teamwork. So here you can see in this file some you know some standard rules are defined and these rules needs to be followed by each developer in the team. Okay so in this file we can specify a set of rules which every developer needs to follow while coding the application. Then we have this git ignore file. In this file, you can specify the files and folders which you want to exclude from your Git repository. Now, if you have not worked with Git, then don't worry, it is not something which you need to know in order to learn and develop Angular applications. Git is simply a tool for managing and versioning your source code. Okay. Then we have this angular.json file. This is one of the most important files and it contains all the configuration of our Angular project. So it contains configuration like what is the project name, what is the root folder name, what is the source folder name and other configurations. Okay. Now before Angular 6, instead of this Angular JSON file, we had Angular CLI.json. That means if you are working with Angular 5 or any lower version of Angular, then you will not find this file. Instead, you will find Angular CLI.json file. Okay. Then we have this karma.config.js file. This is a configuration file for karma, which is a test runner for JavaScript. Again, we are not going to worry about running tests at, at this stage. Then we have this package.json file, and this is one important file. This is a standard configuration file, which every node project has. In this file, you can see we have some configurations like name of the project, version of the project, and other configurations. Then you will also see we have this dependencies and dev dependencies. Inside this dependencies, you will see a list of dependencies on which our project is dependent on. So for example, if I open this app folder and if I go to this app component.ts file, here you can see we are using this component class and this component class is present in Angular, Angular Co. So this Angular Co is a dependency for this angular project and since it is a dependency it has been listed inside this package.json file as you can see here so this angular co is listed inside this dependencies section in the same way we also have something called dev dependencies and here all those dependencies are listed which we need for the development purpose so for example this angular cli we need it for developing our Angular application. So that is listed in this dev dependencies. These, this Angular CLI or these dependencies, which is listed inside this dev dependencies, we don't need it in production. We only need them for development purpose. But the dependencies, which is listed inside this dependencies section, we need them for, our, for developing our application. That means our project is dependent on these dependencies. Finally, we have this tsconfig.json file. This file contains a bunch of settings for your TypeScript compiler. The TypeScript compiler looks at these settings and based on these settings, it is going to compile your TypeScript code into JavaScript that the browser can understand. Again, for most of the part, we don't have to change anything in this file. So these are some important files and folders which you should know about. Now, for most of the parts, we will be working with the files and folders which we have inside this source folder and we are not going to touch any other files and folders in this folder structure. But still, I wanted to give you a brief overview of why do we have these files and folders in this project folder structure. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.